Okay, so now that we've started to get the uh, facade set up, you'll need to continue setting up those openings for the shop fronts and any other openings you need in the facade for your hotel. So I've only got a few here, you'll need to keep going with those. Um, but then also, as you're planning out the ground floor, there are some other, I suppose, some primary elements that you'll all need to uh, consider. So I've opened up the floor plan with the AutoCAD drawing so that you can see the basic uh, size that I've given you for the fire stairs. So that's something you'll all need. So maybe just assume that you'll need at least two fire stairs, but you'll also need to check your travel distances to see if you need more. Do you know where to look to see the requirements for fire stairs? There's something you should all be doing when you're doing your designs. Sorry? NCC. NCC, yep. So which part of the NCC? Again, you will remember this. If you start doing the work as a designer, this will be second nature before long. Volume one. Volume one's very good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, volume one. one. But you're on the right track. Yeah, it is volume one because it's a class uh, five and six building. Um, so that's good if you're thinking about that. Volume one and then section D. Yeah. So that's where you should be looking to see volume one, volume one section D. Yeah. And you will remember most of section D before long because that's where you spend a lot of time working with interior design. Okay, so that's going to give you the requirements for five stairs. You need to check that. But again, for now, just assume you need two. And now, I'm going to go and draw some walls to set out my fire, um, isolated shaft. In other words, the thing that the fire stairs sit in, the, the four walls. So I'm just going to draw walls architectural. And then draw the rectangle. I'm just going to use a... Well, what sort of walls do you think you need? For fire stairs? Yeah, yeah, but in real life, what would the walls be made from? Were they made from wood or...? Concrete. Concrete, yeah. Concrete's good. Anything that doesn't burn. Right? It's to save you in a fire. So, wood... Wood can actually be used in some situations, but usually not, okay, because wood burns. So, yeah, think about non-combustible materials. Are you looking at all the things in the, in the news about, you know, poorly built buildings? You know? You don't watch the news? It's a huge thing in the news at the moment. You should be looking at this. It's important for the industry you're going to work in to understand these things. So there's lots of issues, and the, and the building designers um, and interior designers are the ones who are going to get in trouble for this with buildings not complying with fire safety regulations and things like this and people losing millions of dollars because their apartments have uh, issues and they're falling down, largely because of uh, people not knowing the, um, the requirements. So, really important. And the, the reason people died in England in that, that fire is because they had a, a, a cladding material on the outside of the building that was meant to be non-combustible and it wasn't. And it burnt, and, and they all died, 60 people or so. So it's a terrible thing. Um, I hate that material, Aluka Bond. I haven't specified it for 25 years, but I have specified it. And luckily, uh, stopped doing it. Oh, yeah, it's in the studio Moodle, not, the, not ours. So it's called, just called Revit File. Uh, oh, Elizabeth, I'm sure we'll be able to show you, but um, otherwise I can give it to you in a minute as well. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my wall type, and then I'm going to look at the level. So it's starting on ground floor, and I'm going to take the top constraint all the way up to roof. And I might leave the location line and wall center line, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle. Maybe to start with, I'll just draw it over the top of the ones I've already got. Okay, so that gives me a pretty good idea of the size of my fire stairs, and if I go to other levels, I can see those walls coming through to there as well, which is what I want. Okay, so if we want this fire stair to save people in a fire, what do they do when they get out to the ground floor? So they come all the way down the building, let's go to the section. Right, so there's the walls of the, the shaft. So they're up here, they come down, 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 down to the ground floor, then what do they do? Exit. Yeah, exit how? Well, can they? 
can you go through the building? In some cases you can. Right? And you will see, especially with some older buildings, that the fire escape discharges inside the building. But that's an older thing. So with new buildings you shouldn't do that. You should have a, an isolated exit. So what do you do? If you want to have it on the ground floor, you take a wall through from here to the outside. Something like that. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. You can't do that. You can't go from inside the building. Okay, so it's got to have a shaft that connects to the outside. Yes. You can't go through the building anymore. In the past, you could, but that's an old control. Now you can't. So you need to have something like this. So you need either a corridor that connects that shaft to the outside. Yeah. And then like, um, my, my side is part of the um, shop, uh, shop. Yeah. Is it any or? No, you can't, you have to have, it has to have its own corridor. So you have, need to have its own corridor. Yeah, that's right. Wow. So you'll see in the building, if you go and have a look in street, in, well if you haven't been there yet, just go to street view, and, uh, and you'll see it. So these are the things you've, you've got to think about, and there's no point going ahead and doing a whole design for your ground floor until you've thought about these things because it might all need to change. So let's have a look at it. And so even though this is a fairly old building, you'll see that it already has these things. Okay, so here. So you can see there, it's got there they are, these doors. Okay, so they're doors, they're from the, from the fire escape. Yeah. Right, so, so you can't just walk through those. If you went inside the building, that would all be separated from the rest of that level. That's right, they've got to have a corridor that connects to the outside, yeah. to a horizontal exit. How to go along for the oh no, it can be as long as you like, no. because it's all fire, fire isolated. No, no. You can go for hundreds of metres. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's connected As long as it's fire isolated, that's right, and it's connected to the outside. That's the requirement. Yeah. 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 No maximum length. Now, there are options if you get if you have part of it open. So if you have if you have a drive in car park or um, driveway, then the fire escape can connect to that driveway. If it's open. Like so you know at the Hilton? Yeah, like in, you know in the city, in, in, where the Hilton is. Uh -huh. And so you can drive under that building, all the taxis and all the people coming into the building, they drive through, yeah. right? So the fire escape can go into that area, even though it's under, under the building. Under. Because it's got open space either side. So okay. that's, that's another option. But in this building, it has the, if I put my fire like exit in the basement, yeah. which is like... That's another option, so we'll get to the basement. So this is all on the ground floor. The other option is to do it on the basement. I'm going to show you that. So, okay, that's good to think about. So I'm going to draw another one. Right, and again, the same height up to the roof. And let's say I want this one to go through the basement. So I'm going to make it start on the basement level. Okay, so now if we look at that in the... I'll just move my section down to here. Okay, so this one goes all the way down to the basement. So, with those, it's really important they can't get out on the ground floor level. They need to go all the way to the basement. So I go to my basement. And so at this point, you can see I don't have any columns yet on my basement level. Yes. So now that I'm starting to plan that out, I might go and get the columns. So I'm going to select all of the columns on this level. Just with a window, I'll select everything. Go to filter. And then just tick the columns. So I've got all the columns on the ground floor. Copy to clipboard, go to basement, paste, align to current view. So that puts a copy of all of those columns now on the basement level. And then I'm just going to change them over here. Uh, well, I don't have the column in the list that I want, so I'm going to go to edit type. And then load. And what sort of columns do you think we need on the basement level? 
Concrete, exactly. Right, that's right, spot on. Yep. So that's it. So I'll go structural columns, concrete, and I'll just get one of the uh, rectangular, or actually I'll just get the square columns. And that'll do. Okay, so coming back to the fire stand now. So instead of coming out on the ground floor, I'm coming out on the basement. And then I can have a corridor that goes across to here, to the outside. And then have my stairs going up from the basement to the outside. Now, maybe this can be even further inside the building now. So I'm going to select these four walls and move them across maybe, let's see, at least one grid, maybe even two. So I can move it all the way to there even. And then maybe it makes more sense to have the, col the, uh, the corridor. Yep, so the corridor can come down through here. Not well, so, that's so it, part of it would come out on the ground floor. So we probably still need to have uh, something like this. So top will make uh, level one. Yep. So we probably need something like this. All right. So that's where the stairs would come up from the basement, and then you'd have the door here somewhere. So maybe the, the wall come over a little bit. So we'd have the door to be outside there. Uh, and then the stairs can come up here. But it still helps because it means that we've got passageway through here. So it's not blocking off that ground floor completely. Uh, sorry, I'm not sure I understand. So I just want to in ground floor. Yep, yep. And what might make it clearer, I'll draw a section that goes this way now. And this is a good thing when you're working in Revit. And if you want to see inside, make sections so you can see in different directions. And so there... Uh, if I go to shaded, it might be even clearer. Well, let's go actually to um, move the section over to here. Yeah. Okay, so there's my, that's my shaft coming down. Yeah. And then you go across and then up. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. That's it. So, and, and the great thing with Revit is we can draw all those things in as we go. So I'm going to draw a stair now that goes from basement to ground floor mm -hmm. and I'll make it a concrete stair. So I'll just draw that the length it needs to be. Uh, basement to ground floor, decide, oh, four metres it's got to go. Gee, that's a lot. Uh, well, that's what it's got to do. Or maybe it can be a bit lower. So, in fact, what I'll do is go and change that basement level because it's probably a bit too low. Four metres, uh, probably what it is in real life, but let's say it doesn't need to be quite that much. So, because car parks don't need to be, um, have such high ceilings. So maybe I'll make it 3,000. Minus 3,000, sorry. And you can do this too. Yeah. Okay, so by making it not so low, that means my stairs don't need to be so high. So back to drawing stairs again, and this time that's better. I only need 16 rises, that's more like it. Okay, so back to monolithic and 17 rises, that's still fine. Yeah. Maybe about there. Yeah. Okay, so then now when you look in the section, it'll be a bit clearer, hopefully how it works. So I've got the stairs on that level going from the basement up back up to the ground so the people will come down through the um, fire stair shaft. You could even draw the stairs in there but I won't do that because it'll take a minute. Um, up you come all the way down through this shaft to the bottom and then go across and then back up those stairs to the outside. Down, down and then up. up, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's oh, normal. So have a look in, in lots of car parks. Uh -huh. They'll have that. Oh, right. yeah. So if you look in the car park in uh, Dali Harbour. So it's, it's actually like stacking the corridor space in the ground floor. Yeah, that's right. Exactly, that's right. Exactly, yeah. That's it. Ah, okay.
That's so easy. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, so it saves a bit of room on the ground floor. And... Uh, Yeah, well, that's right. So this, this corridor would block up part of the car park. But that's okay. Cars can oh, go around it's and park in. Well. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Car that's just tough. Car parks always have these things. And it's fine. I mean, the people drive their cars around to somewhere else to park. And that's just what they have to do. Uh, so, uh, and you shouldn't need that much car parking anyway. For a hotel, you don't need a lot. Um, it's mostly for unit buildings, things like that, where you need a lot of car parking. So hotels don't have a huge amount, um, even though some, you know, some guests want the, the car park, but um, most people staying in the hotel don't, don't drive. Yeah. Um, can I ask you a question? Because this one actually asked me, to mm. ask me, mm. is it okay if I put um, my lease mm. against the wall? Uh, against the outside wall? Yes. Not really. Not really. Not really, because, well, wh why do you think it's a problem? Well, if you have a look on the upper, the first floor plan, you can see straight away. You've got windows uh, all the around the building. Like, uh, the back, the back, the back one. Yeah, well, but there, it's only on the bottom levels that it's blocked off. On the upper levels, you do have windows. Uh, yeah. So that's why you wouldn't normally you wouldn't want to have anything up against those walls. Uh, and it's good planning to avoid blocking the windows. Because the advantage of having these exterior walls that all have windows is you're going to get plenty of light and ventilation from those openings. And so you put the things that don't need windows, like lift shafts, bathrooms, even kitchens, you put them on the inside of the building where you don't have any windows. So that's normally the way you plan it, rather than blocking up you know, windows. Yep, sure. But it can do it, but it's not good planning to block up windows. Windows are a, thi a good thing that you're trying to keep. Don't worry, I get the yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's the way you should be thinking, especially hotels. I mean, it's the windows that people pay money for yeah. in the hotel rooms. Um, so, what else do you think you need on the ground floor? What are the main elements everyone's going to have? Yeah. Yeah, with lobby reception, same thing, pretty much. Yep. So. Yeah, so that's all related. Yeah, that's right. And have a look at, if you're not sure about these things, just have a look at hotels that are around town and they all have similar setups, even though they all vary. And uh, you know, even though I've worked on a hotel or two in my time, the way that I learn about hotel design is by you know, having a look when I stay in them at, uh, at the things they have. So yeah, so definitely the lobby and the reception is important and everyone's going to have those. Um, what about the drop-off for your cars? So people getting dropped off in cars, do you know what that area is called? Oh, you mean the people drop off the cars? Yeah, yeah. It's a really nice word to know. Yeah, yeah, valet. It's the valet parking, or they'll have a valet. But there's a word, port, chur. So remember this one, it really will help you when you're working in interiors, if you know terms like this. So it's an old thing for the carriageway or the carriage porch. Yeah. So most hotels have these. Not all of them, because they don't all have a, a drive up um, area like this. But if they've got it, that's what it's called, port couture or couture. And um, so even my, uh, my granddad was a... Um, um, a minister in a, in a church and, uh, and so his, his house, his rectory that they lived in had one of these as well and it was a beautiful feature to have, like, you know, this huge circular area they drive uh, everything up to and a uh, really nice thing. So uh, yeah, that's an option. So if you were trying to get one in here, it would be possible to uh, maybe have that whole area there as, a, as an underground driveway or along here. There, there are definitely options to have that under the building. Or you could have it outside and you could use that part alongside the building down here. So there are definitely options for that as well. But then that might get you thinking about the other options you've got for, um, for vehicles. So we've got this basement car park. So how do you think you're going to get to the basement car park? Yeah, that's for walking, definitely, yep. You should be thinking about that. Yep, that's good. So, yep, for walking. And I'm always more in favour of pedestrian transport than cars. 
So that's always good if you're thinking about the, the people first and walking is always good. Um, but of course they need to be able to drive to the car park as well. So how are they going to get there if they're driving? How do you drive into a car park? A ramp. Yeah, and a ramp. That's right. So you need to have room for the ramp. Okay, so that's the final thing I was going to show you. So to set out the size of your ramp, now we don't want to get too technical, even though if you were doing a real hotel, you would definitely, if you're an interior designer, you would definitely be expected to know these things. Um, do you know roughly the slope of a ramp for cars? No, okay, so, yeah. Okay, what's the slope of a ramp normally? It's pretty steep. It's not quite that steep, but yeah, it's pretty steep. So, for people, how steep does the ramp normally need to be? What's the steepest you can do a ramp for people to walk on? You don't know? Okay, it's, okay so for people, it's one in eight. Yeah. Okay, so that's for able-bodied people. For disabled access, it's 1 in 14. But again, for people normally, it's 1 in 8. So that's a good figure to remember. So 1 in 8, it's called a step ramp. Sorry? 1 in 8. One in eight. One in eight. So in other words, for every metre that you go up, you go 8 metres across. Yep. And I'll show you how to make it. Okay, so to see that in action, I'll just draw one. So I'm going to go and make a ramp. And maybe if you haven't seen this before, this will help you too. So again, using the ramp tool. So here is my ramp type. I'm going to go edit type, duplicate, and I'm going to call it step ramp. So here's the slope. Maximum slope, you can see there, 1 over x. x is going to be 8. So that means for every metre we go up, we go across 8. So then I'm just going to draw, also I'm going to change the length of this just so that it's not going to cut me off. I'll make it 30,000. You can't do a ramp this long normally, so don't do this. But this is just so you can see how big they are. Okay, so that's if I was going to do one ramp that was 1 in 8 to go from basement to ground floor. So there's my, there's my huge ramp. And you might think, well, that's really long. But have you seen how long ramps for disabled access are outside most buildings that need them? It would be nearly twice that long if it was for disabled access. Mm -hmm. right, so that's one in eight. Oh. And I just want you to see that because, again, that can be done for, for people. But the main reason you do one in eight ramps these days is for, um, for cars. Um, yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to show you how to do a ramp for a car park, which is a bit more involved. Now, it might seem like a bit of work, but you have to know this to be able to do ramps for car parks. So ramps for car parks, um, again, they, they can be one in eight. All right, so that's the first point. So I've made a new ramp, and I've changed this maximum slope to one in eight. But that's just for the part you drive onto for the transition, in other words. Then when it goes to the steeper part, have you ever tried to walk up a ramp in a car park? No? Oh yeah, sure, what's the, you know what the number is? Um, it's on the computer. Okay, so, well, you should, you should try these things. Um, right, so when you're walking around in uh, different places, you should start to observe the different things in, in the buildings and also you know, things like car parks. So it can actually go to one in four, which you'll see is really uncomfortable. If you try to walk up that sort of ramp, you'll see you, it, it'll feel it's too steep. But um, again, it's for cars. So, so here I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to call it um, car ramp. Right, and that can be one in four. And the maximum length, we'll just leave that, because I'll show you how to work that out. Okay, now, maybe if you're not at the stage where you can look up these uh, different things, 
you can just copy what I'm doing. So I'm going to make the width there 3,000. That's for one car. That's one car. That's one way. One car. Yeah. Three meters. Yeah. Yeah. You can go to 5.5 for two cars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not depends. Here we've got to do them separately because we don't have room to do two. So here, each of these bays, if you measure, it's the width there. It's less than 5.5. It's 3.5. So we can't have two way. So we've got to make one here and one here. Yeah, one in, one out, that's right. Exactly, yeah, you can't fit it. Okay, so again, so you might just need to copy uh, exactly what I'm doing. And um, so here I'm going to change back to the step ramp, which remember is one in eight. Then I'm going to change the, oh, I've got the base level on basement. I'm going to change the top level to basement as well. And then I'm going to make the top offset 250. Right. So what you'll see then, and remember I've changed the width to 3000. And then I'm going to draw my ramp, just starting roughly in the middle there. Don't be too precise because you can always move it. Draw it along and you'll see it will be 2 metres long. Right, and it'll stop at 2,000. If you're wondering why it knows to stop at 2,000, it's because, again, it's 250. It's the height of the ramp. 250 times 8 right, is 2,000. That's the height. the height. Yeah, so it's going up a quarter of a metre. Oh, okay, a quarter of a metre. Yep, which means it's 2 metres long because it's 1 in 8. So that's it. So I'll finish it. And then I'm going to make another section just so that I can show you what it looks like. And because all car park uh, ramps need to be the same, you could just copy exactly what I'm doing. So there's my first ramp. So again, it's 1 in 8. OK, so then I'll go back to basement and draw my next ramp. And then this one, I'm going to make the base level, still basement, the base offset 250, right, because I want the, the start of this ramp to be at the top of my last ramp. I'm going to change the ramp type to car ramp, right, because this one can be one in four. And then we'll change the, uh, or make sure the top level is ground floor, and then change the top offset to minus 250. Okay, I won't explain it all, but you'll see why when you draw it. So I'm going to draw this from the midpoint of the ramp I've just done, across to the left, as far as it wants to go. Okay, so again, tick to finish, and I'll show you the ramp in section. Right, so there's my second ramp. If you've ever driven up a ramp in a car park, you'd know uh, what that feels like when you go from the first ramp to the second one. Yep. So I'm just moving this across. I've just selected it with the arrows and uh, nudged it. Okay, so there's my second ramp. Now I might go to ground floor. And you can see it there as well, but it's covered by my floor. So I might just go to wireframe so that you can see the ramp there. And then I'll do the final ramp. Okay, so it's going to go back to being a step ramp. Then the base level, I'll leave that as ground floor, but I'll change the base offset to minus 250. Top level, I'll change to ground floor as well and change the top offset to zero. And then just draw from the end there, across and again as far as it wants to go. Tick to finish. And then now I might go to the section just so you can see all three ramps. So can you see now why we needed three ramps? We needed the two at the end for that transition. And I'm just going to use the arrow key and nudge that across so that it's all sitting inside my building. And uh, that's probably a good place for me to stop because it's probably a good idea to try that before you go too far. But if you get that done, then you can always mirror that to get a second ramp. Right, so one is to go in, the other one's to go out. 
So now maybe just to finish that off, I'll uh, make a camera view so that you can see it. Right, so there's my two ramps. We fix up the handrails later, but at this point it's really more uh, for planning that you need to draw those things to get an idea how much room you need to leave for those ramps. Dave, do you have this video in YouTube? Yes, I've just recorded it all. Thank you. Yeah, of course, I wouldn't give you that without recording it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I wouldn't expect you to remember all that. So that's good. So, okay, so then what would we do if we want to cut a hole out for those ramps? Do you remember what to do to cut a hole? To cut a hole for the ramps? Shaft, exactly. Good. Yep, that's good. Okay, so I'm just going to make a big shaft right through that whole area. So with the shaft tool, I'll draw a rectangle. Right over the top of the ramp, so I'll just keep it simple. Uh, right over the top. Maybe just up to here. Oh no, let's go all the way to here. In fact, so there makes more sense because I don't need all the little bits of floor uh, left over. Or in fact, so I will bring it back to here because I want the floor there. Yeah. So um, I'll just change the base offset to, uh, I'll just make it zero. And then the top, we'll make it ground floor and the top offset, I don't know, 100. So that makes a nice hole. Alright, so there we are. So now we can see our. Yep. What, the, the gap between the columns? Yeah. Yeah, so you can fix that. So now I can go to the column and see it's got the top offset. Uh -huh. Just make that zero. Okay. And then they'll touch. Uh, yeah. Right, but do that as you go. So at this point, though, you're still just working out how much room everything needs. Yeah. And, uh, and then you can uh, adjust it. And so there you can see I uh, you know, need to adjust my void. So I can go and adjust the... Um, the shaft now to where my ramp is on the top and then again just keep having a look in the 3D view and this is where it's great to have the 3D views showing you all of these things. Right, so that gives a really good idea for your planning how much room you then need to leave for all these other things. So that whole shaft of course comes through to the ground floor so you might just go and put a wall around that straight away. Yeah. And just block that whole area off. Right, so that gives you a much better idea how much space you have then for the other things you need on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. And you can plan it out a lot more easily because there's nothing worse than doing a great plan and having all these really good ideas and then realising that you can't put those things where you want them because you need to have room for the ramp and the fire stairs and those other important things. Um, so, so they're the main things. Maybe you think about some of the other services like air conditioning and, um, and plumbing. So you don't need a lot of space but you need to allow some room for those things because that needs to go all the way through the building from the bottom to the top. Yeah. So those are smaller, but if you at least just draw a, um, uh, a riser, so just with a rectangle, so you can say, right, maybe you're going to have a plant room um, you know, near the fire stairs is sometimes a good place. And then you can say, right, I know this plant room, it's going to be where I have all the air conditioning units, and then I might have a, uh, a riser that goes through, let's say, about here. And we'll get rid of this wall. But that riser, something like that, that would have the pipes that come from the air conditioning units, right? Which just have water that go to each level and then they go to these air handling <coughs> units that um, all the air conditioning ducts can connect to. Uh, and that's the best way. You need to have air conditioning, unfortunately. You can't, most people won't accept passive heating and cooling, even though. 
for the environment, that would be much better for everyone. But again, most people want to have air conditioning as well these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, not everything. So in this case, we just have this riser that goes all the way through the building. And that will have these pipes that just have the water that heats and cools the air on each other. So they need a pipe for the cool, cool water, a pipe for the warm water. And you have a chiller and a boiler in the plant room. And uh, so that's it. And it's a really efficient system. It, environmentally, it's not too bad if, you, if it's water cooled. And um, much better than the other ways they do it, like these horrible things that pollute and give us terrible air as well, these um, split system uh, pocket air conditioners, so just horrible, horrible things. So if you can do a water cooled one, it's actually um, more efficient in terms of um, space as well, if you plan it properly. So yeah, it's just a matter of allowing for it. And if you do that from the beginning, then it shouldn't mess up your designs. So that, and then plumbing's the other one. Plumbing won't take up as much room, but you need to have room for the pipes, basically from your toilets, but then um, any other drainage that you need. And uh, yeah, anyway, so hopefully that'll help with the planning. If you think about those things in advance, don't put too much detail in, just plan out block areas like I've done there. And that should help you a lot when you start to put in the detail planning. And uh, yeah, so I'll give you some time to get onto those things. Then we can start to put in some detail. Like, because there's no point, I want to put in the joists and have all the floor joists exposed in this one. But there's no point putting in all of those joists through the whole building if I realise that I've got huge areas that I'm going to take out for the fire stairs and the ramps and my risers and all of these other things. There's no point putting in all of that detail there. So you want to do this first and then we can get into some of that detail and then hopefully, maybe not today, but by next week we can set up some preliminary renders just like we've been doing for Motorvale. So that's the basic plan. Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah, sure. That's fine. Yep.